Hello, we're in England and we've done a number of, of uh, Japanese pots this week and uh, a couple of Chinese ones. I have more Japanese than Chinese because they're more readily available on the market. And again, I've come across a couple of Japanese vases. So I'm going to give you a crash course in, uh, about these pots. The next expert will say, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. You might think I don't know what I'm talking about. I, what, I, I, what I'm trying to get across to you is the, the things I look for when I buy these pots, when I sell these pots. And I'm not an academic on oriental pottery, but I have sold lots of, lots of oriental pottery. We do have many, many examples in stock. So Japanese, um, why are they Japanese? The, 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 the easiest to give away is the um, appearance. Um, beyond the appearance, you can look at the, the material. So I, I can see inside these pots, here that the white glaze, the creamy glaze, is running down the inside and beneath the creamy glaze there is a brown pottery. So we are we can be sure these are not porcelain. And that is a very good sign if you're if you're trying to work out whether it's Japanese or Chinese. Most or well, a great deal of the Japanese pottery is not porcelain. So what they will do, the Japanese, they will cover the ordinary clay of which this is made with a creamy ivory glaze to make it look like porcelain. So that's the first thing. Second thing, uh, the sound. They're dull when you hit them. It's like, it's a biscuity material and it's not as fine or as hard or as stain resistant as porcelain. And it's a softer material than porcelain. If you smash porcelain, it breaks like a piece of glass. If you smash this, it will break like a, like a, a biscuit, literally. So you have the material, you have the style. The um, other thing on these, what I'm thinking about it is, if you, if you notice the size are different, this is not about whether it's Japanese or Chinese, but can you see the, those bands at different heights and the tops are different. This is higher. That means they haven't been made in a slip cast plaster mould. These have been made on a turntable. So these have been made from a lump of pottery by hand and they have had these grooves chased in by hand and I believe that these are not moulded, these would have been made by the potter. So these are round, they are they have these sort of ribbed borders or colours, they have these uh, chased flared tops, it's chased inside. The um, pottery is, is basic, it's not rubbish, was not extremely fine. These export pieces meant which would have been put into either given or sold to tourists, sold to tourists who visited Japan, or they would have been packed in crates and sent to England to be put into the stores, department stores. So they would have been packed in crates with straw or paper. Literally millions of items would have come to Europe and America. Um, you will find porcelain is widely used with, with geisha ware, which is the teapots and sources you find quite a lot of still in England, the ones that have a light shining through. If light comes through it, it's porcelain. It was one of the features of the geisha ware. Um, the tableware, Japanese tableware, because it is utility ware, doesn't have the prices of decorative items. So these are vases, they're only used really to look at, okay, you put a flower in them, like a bud vase, but vases are for, for decoration. If you get into teapots, cups and saucers, they have, an, have a household element which keeps the price down. It's not only because there's so much of it, it's, a, it's not, not held in such demand. So the, the exterior is painted and I'm quite pleased with these that the scenes vary. This pair of scenes are not opposing, which means they're not mirrored. So it's not a top, right, top scene, a pair of scenes, but they, you'll notice they are painted differently. The seated male is different. To the standing, well, sorry, the larger male, I don't know what he is. Is he a samurai? Is he a shogun? I've no idea what he is. He hasn't got a sword. He's got a book. The trade in England, the amateur trade, would say he's a scholar. This one, he's reading a scroll. So you can see that they're different, yet similar. On the other side, you have two more scenes. These are shaven-headed characters. Um, I don't think they're children. They have books. Well, there's a book on the floor. 
they have this shaved head. I don't know what it means. Are they religious? Are they monks? I don't know. There's a scroll, I think. So these are nicely painted. The paint is 3D. You can see as you look across it, the enamel paint, which is on top of the glaze, and the gold paint, which is on top of the glaze, has a 3D effect. And this helps um, the decorative, decorative, effect, decorative effect. Really nicely done. And it's what you'd expect on these. These are not the very low quality export wear satsuma vases. They're not the, the very good ones or the very bad ones. They're, they're somewhere in the middle. And they have some little panels which just give it a bit of an edge over some of the basic the basic export wear that you, that you will see. They're small, which is a limitation. I don't like small vases, as you know. I, I call it bric-a-brac, I call it uh, touristic. And, and I think that these are on the cusp of being rejected by me because they are nearly too much like bric-a-brac or touristic, but they are such nice ones. And there's a pair and they're not made in the cast because of their different sizes. And then well decorated on both sides. Condition is good that I, that I bought them. There is a splash of paint in the glaze there, which is a shame, but you do see that on this stuff. There is a chip. Yeah, and as I say, you can see beneath the application of ivory glaze, they are a biscuity, ordinary pottery. So in Kyoto, in Japan, there was a lot of this, this stuff made in this manner. And more notably, this has come from Satsuma, which is in a different part of the island, islands of Japan. So I hope I've got across to you some features which you will find helpful. As I say, I'm giving you my own trade advice. I'm not giving you an academic interpretation. Thanks for having a look.